Swami, it seems that mental illness in this age is rather in the ascent. Many people suffer from depression or melancholy or, or other things like it, anger, other kinds of emotional disruption. Do you have suggestions for what we can do to alleviate that, what people can do to alleviate that? Well, I wasn't aware it was, that it was worse now than it has been, except that in our age, we certainly are under a lot more stress. Everything happens more quickly. Cars move more quickly. Images on the television screen change every two seconds. So that speeding up may be causing some of it. But uh, I don't really know much about Ill mental illness. I think much of it is due to trying to escape reality. And uh, I think actually it happens also this way, that sometimes, or I should say in the beginning, when people come onto the spiritual path, they, they may not, not being torn between two worlds for a while seek escape in madness. Mm -hmm. It seems like that's the case. I don't know if it's so, but to me, mental illness is basically an in, uh, unwillingness to face reality. Depression can also just be an honest look at the way the world is. It's in a pretty depressing state. Well, it is in a depressing state, but we've got to understand that we are the center of our universe. Yogananda said when he, he had an experience of cosmic consciousness, and he said, I cognized the center of this imperium as a point of intuitive perception in my own heart. The universe's reality is center everywhere, circumference nowhere. It's very interesting because, first of all, people used to think the world was the center of the universe. Then, of course, science showed that there is no such possibility. Now we've reached the point of understanding that every atom is the center of the universe. You are the center of your universe. But what helps us in this respect is that no matter what other people think, no matter what people say about us, what other opinions there may be, we must learn to stand firm in our own center. We must understand that our reality, maybe my reality may be different from yours, but my reality is my reality. Swami. So Swami, you can become happy at will Yes, you can. Happiness has a lot of happiness, and almost everything to do with it is a matter of attitude. If you have the right attitude, then you can be happy. Now, can you be happy seeing, let us say, a whole um, field of people being slaughtered? No, but you can say that this is not my reality. My reality is that God is inside. If you want to slaughter me, it doesn't matter. You're only killing my body, you're not killing me. And in fact, it's very interesting. Books of uh, people who have um, investigated children who have died but still remember their past incarnations. Sometimes these children have recognized their murder mm -hmm. from the past life. There was one where, uh, I don't know whether the murder was condemned for, but the child said, you killed me and he denied it. So they took him, the child took him where he had buried that body and there the body was. Oh he couldn't say anything. <laughs> but uh, it's another thing, strengthening to each of us to know that we don't die. We, we, m most people would live a longer time in the astral world than that. But uh, there's a very interesting case of one boy in America who was screaming and screaming at two years old. And he said, I'm falling, I'm falling in the ocean. And uh, it turned out as he got older, he remembered being a pilot in World War II. Mm. And uh, his plane had been shot down over Iwo Jima. And he took his parents to the place where it went into the sea. And his case became famous enough for his pilots, other crewmen and so on, to still be alive. And his comment to his mother when he saw them, he said, but they're so old. <laughs> <laughs> Swami, um, you paint a picture of 
a vast universe, galaxies, and, and yet every atom is the center of that and universe. And there's life everywhere. But it's a little overwhelming, and I think people may struggle with a sense that it's meaningless. How can there be meaning in such a vast universe that seems so random? It, uh, there's nothing random about it. It's all come from God. The meaning, you know, there's only one religion in the universe. In India, it's called Sanatan Dharma, the eternal religion. And that can only be the, the only religion that they could exist on the most distant planet and the most distant galaxy. Mm -hmm. Everything came from God. Everything must go back to God. That is the, the secret of all life, the secret of all existence. There is no non-life. Even the rocks are living. There's consciousness there. They found, for example, in factories that metals need to have a little rest. Mm -hmm. You can't use them all the time. Mm -hmm. And this is true. When you become enlightened, you'll remember your incarnations all the back, way back to when you were a rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. Swami, what can we learn from those incarnations when we finally do remember them? Or is it not a question of learning at that point? Because I think that we can learn that there is a direction to it all. There's, there seems to be random, but you see that there's all, first of all, from the lowest level up to the human level, there's just a constant progress. You, you have this desire for more consciousness, and it pushes the soul up. Once you reach the human level, then there is ambiguity, there's ambivalence, there's the thought that, that uh, well, this will make me happy, that will make me happy, maybe getting even with people will make me happy. You can rise and fall, you can even go back to an animal level. In fact, if you, you this is the way my guru explained it to me, that, uh, when you, if you do go back to an animal level, then it'll only be for one lifetime, then you'll come back to the human. But if you keep on going back, and every, every lifetime you keep on sinning and acting in a very evil way, then you may th be thrown down all the level, all the way to the level of a germ, <laughs> and you'll have to work your way up. It's a frightening thing then. But if people are determined to be, to act in an evil way, then they will have to bear those consequences. The pain of knowing that you have, you're much more than this germ, you're much more than this worm, you're much more than this animal, uh, that must be a terrible thing. But it's true that all of the past memories, um, you see there's a reason to it. This didn't work. Okay, what will work? Always is a search, search for perfect joy. When we find that perfect joy, we find it in God and in the self within. So, Swamiji, animals evolve as a group? They... No, no, you, animals, you evolve as an animal. You as a soul in an animal to a higher level. I know my guru told me that the, his, two of his disciples, the Lewises, their cat would be a human being in his next life. Association with, with human beings helps animals. Therefore, to have tame animals is a help to them. But I know this movie, for example, an inside job it's called, and it shows people that are very high financially who have destroyed millions of lives in order to keep their wealth. I think people like that may easily be born as tigers next time, mm. or some rapacious kind of animal. It'll only be for one lifetime, but it, it, if you act like a tiger, why not be a tiger? Mm. <laughs> so the consciousness you have will determine what you will be. So Swami, how can such a person uh, evolve? They have to struggle back through the life of a tiger in order no, to... You, 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 when you're a tiger, it's only for one lifetime as a rule. Mm -hmm. Then you come back to the human level. But you, you, how do you evolve? You understand gradually that this didn't work and that will work. Mm -hmm. It's a long process. 
But, uh, so it sounds like pain is one of the prime... Suffering is a necessary tool of progress. Mm -hmm. Without suffering, you wouldn't want to progress. This world would be just fine. <laughs> but it's got pain in it. And that's a great disadvantage. And so you try to find something that's better. Swamiji, animals don't seem to have a sense of ego, but men do. That's so um, ego equals pain. And so you have no, to... No, ego equals pleasure too. Mm -hmm. It's true that being in an ego for the soul would be painful. In fact, I say that it's like a ladder. Anything that is down is taking you into darkness. Anything that is up takes you toward the light. If you've reached this level, anything down from there will be greater darkness and greater pain. Anything up from there will be uh, greater joy. And this would be true for moral sense, for example. If a lazy fellow were to wake up one day and say, I want to be a millionaire, everybody, even saints, would applaud. Mm -hmm. But if a saint like Mahatma Gandhi or uh, any, any saint were to wake up one morning and say, I'm tired of serving humanity, I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> Even materialists would say, this man has fallen. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of direction. There are no absolute moral rights and wrongs. But we do learn gradually that there are certain ways that go to us toward right living, because we feel better when we follow the right path. So the way of evolution is through unconsciousness as plants and animals into a consciousness of self. Well, there's some consciousness even of ego, even in animals. Uh, they, they know when you're hurting them, but they don't have as strong a sense of ego. And the sense of self is always there. If you prick a worm, it will wriggle away. That shows that there's some sense of self there. There are two things that science can never reproduce. One is self-consciousness, the other is feeling. Mm. They, can, they can reason, they can have computers reasoning things impeccably, but they can't produce in a computer or anything artificial, they can't produce feeling or self-consciousness. That is something that is born into us. That is why in order to achieve freedom, we must calm our feeling and uh, understand that we are a part of the infinite love and bliss of God.